want to give away $1 million tonight if somebody can prove that they are smarter than a fifth grader. Let's meet our class, Cody! He is a 29-year-old corporate trainer who attended Divine Infant Elementary in Westchester, Illinois. Welcome, P.K. Coleman! Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it, let's do it. P.K., how are you? Yeah, I'm great, I'm great. Welcome to the show. Right, thank you so much, thank you. Look at this school picture. <laughs> Man, look, at that, look at that bow tie. The I'm sweet styling. shirt. I was going to say the <laughs> bow tie to go with it as well. Oh, man. You look like Urkel's cousin or something. <laughs> I don't know. All right. And, and you're, it says you're a corporate trainer. What does that mean? Well, that means, you know, I travel the world. I go places all the way from San Juan, Puerto Rico, Anchorage, Alaska, St. Thomas, Virgin Islands. I do seminars for people who work for corporations, teach them how to read financial statements, how to work as a team in the workplace, a variety of things. Oh, yeah. that's awesome, yeah. man. Yeah. Well, we are all about teamwork here. You have five new classmates who are going to be taking the same test you're taking, and you can okay. cheat off of them. So pick one of them. Let's get started. Oh, boy. I think I'm going to start off with Cody. Cody, come on up here. All right, roller skates. I love it. <laughs> all right, let me explain how the game works. On the board, you're going to see 10 subjects, first grade through the fifth grade. Your okay. first correct answer is going to be worth $1,000. Your 10th correct answer is worth $500,000. You get that far. We're going to give you one more question, and it will be worth $1 million, OK? All right. Now, at any point, you can take the money that you've won, and you can drop out of school. But before you leave, one little piece of business we have. You have to promise me you will look into that camera and tell millions of people I am not smarter than a fifth grader. Oh, well, that's a big if, because I don't anticipate doing that today, but you got yourself a deal. All right, I like your, I like your style. I want you to be the first guy to win a million. All right, let's do it, let's do it. Let's find out, is T.K. Coleman Woo! smarter than a fifth grader? All right. Right, right. Cody, if you had to help TK with a couple of subjects, what would they be? Well, I'm good at math, and I like grammar and U.S. geography, too. Grammar and U.S. geography, a first, second, and third grade. What would you like, TK? You know, I'm all about working as a team. I believe Cody has my back, so second grade math. Let's second grade happen. math, all right. Listen carefully. The $1,000 question is, this is a classroom club question. How many faces are there on a cube? How many faces are there on a cube? Your classmate Cody has locked in his answer. Okay. How many faces are there on a cube? I want to take my time with this, make sure I'm thinking it through. Playing a game safe. How many faces are there in a cube? Well, we know that we have a, a cube is uh, based on the square. We know we have four faces on a square. And I'm going to say that, uh, let's see, because a cube, we have a square here, a square there. <laughs> let's get that all fixed up. My intuition is telling me that there are eight. That seems right, and uh, more importantly, I'm, I'm confident in, in Cody. I think Cody's the future, and uh, if I fail on this one, I'm sure Cody's got my back, so I'm gonna go with eight. Woo! Let's, let's make that cube we started to make, all okay. right? I you got we... two sides. I got two sides. What does that leave left? One up here. One down here. Mm. Mm. All right, so that, that leaves us with six. <laughs> All right. That does leave us with six, yeah. but yeah. you said eight. I said and eight. And therefore, we have a little bit of a problem. Woo. First question. Well, you Unless know what Cody, who is our future, said six, 
you're going home with nothing and you become part of our past. Well, you know what? It's a little too early to judge. I'm going to be optimistic and I'm going to say, let's get excited because I think Cody has this. I like how positive you are. Let's do it. Let's do it. The question, how many faces are on a cube? We found out the correct answer is six. TK, take a look at the board. Your friend Cody said six. Yes, you are the future. There it is right there. One, two, three, four, five, six. We got that first one out of the way. You oh, got a thousand dollars. Let's double that right now, TK. Let's double it. Let's double it. Time to pick another subject. Oh man. All right. Let's go with uh, first grade animal science. First grade that. animal science. All right. For two thousand dollars, the first grade animal science question is this: True or false? The primary reason woodpeckers peck at trees is so they can eat the wood. True or false? The primary reason woodpeckers peck at trees is so that they can eat the wood. Cody has locked in his answer. Okay, okay. The primary reason woodpeckers peck at trees is so that they can eat the wood. Huh. You know, I was always one of those students who, uh, who looked at my teachers and says, you know, when am I ever gonna need to know this? <laughs> and uh, I tell you, boy, some, some of those questions you ask come back to haunt you. Woodpeckers peck at trees is so that they can eat the wood. I mean, I, I guess that, that sounds logical. You know, they're woodpeckers, they peck wood, unless there's something underneath the wood that they're trying to get. And I think there is. There's gotta be some food, like insects, I think, that they're uh, going for that's underneath that wood. And I'm thinking their pecking abilities is there to assist them in getting those insects. I do have a, I can cheat. You could peek at his paper. Right. You could copy his paper. You could answer the question yourself, or you could drop out with $1,000. Right. Well, I guess at this point, if I cheat, I'm still not going to be certain. So I'm still going to have to fall back on what seems reasonable to me. So uh, hey, let's just move forward with this. I'm going to say the primary reason woodpeckers peck at trees is not so that they can eat the wood. So this statement would be false. Let's lock that in. TK. Yes. Your logic was absolutely right. They pecked through the wood to get to the insects. The right answer is false. You got $2,000. Hey, hey, thank you, buddy. And he had your back again. Oh. All right. $2,000. Eight subjects left. Time to pick another classmate. OK, OK. Let's go with Sierra. Sierra, come on up here. All right. All right, Sierra. Yes? Which subjects do you like the best? I like world history and grammar. OK. What do you think, TK? Well, uh... I like reading, so I see no reason to avoid third grade grammar right now. Third grade grammar, all right. The third grade grammar question worth $5,000 is gonna be revealed when we come back. Oh. fifth grader, our contestant T.K. Coleman. He's got $2,000. We're about to play for $5,000. You selected third grade grammar at the recommendation of Sierra. For $5,000, T.K., here's the third grade question. How many proper nouns are in the following sentence? On Saturday, Olivia is going to a birthday party in Phoenix, Arizona. How many proper nouns are in the following sentence? On Saturday, Olivia is going to a birthday party in Phoenix, Arizona. Sierra has locked in her answer. Okay. How many proper nouns are in the following sentence? On Saturday, Olivia is going to a birthday party in Phoenix, 
Arizona. Okay, okay. So, it probably would help if I could go beyond the definition of a mere noun and I knew what a proper noun was. Uh, You're probably right. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll start with what I do know, which is nouns, and I'll count those because proper nouns must at least be nouns. Um, so I've got a uh, person, place, a thing, Olivia, party, and uh, ooh, would Phoenix, Arizona be one noun because it's one place or two nouns because it's two words? That's a good question. <laughs> uh, well, and you do have two cheats left. I do have two cheats. So I think I'm going to use my peak and weigh what I'm thinking with uh, what the brilliant young mind of Sierra is thinking right now. Let's lock that in. All right, you want to peak. <laughs> TK, if, if you had to give me an answer right now, what would you say? Three. I would say there are three nouns. Okay. I don't know what a proper noun is. That's why I need Sierra right now. All right. Let's see what this 10-year-old girl said. <laughs> Take a look at the board. You wanted to peek at her paper. Sierra said four. Hmm. Well, let's see here. Um, How many proper nouns are in the following sentence? On Saturday, Olivia is going to a birthday party in Phoenix, Arizona. You were thinking three. You peeked at Sierra's paper. She said four. Okay, okay. Well, one thing I am intelligent enough to know is what my weaknesses are, and if I don't know something, I gotta go to the people who I believe do know. So I'm gonna bake my fate on the authority of a 10-year-old. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Never thought that day would come. Jeff, I'm gonna say four. Four. <laughs> Sierra, what is a proper noun? A proper noun is a noun that has to start with a capital letter. Has to start with a capital letter. So like Saturday. Olivia. Phoenix, Olivia. Phoenix. Arizona. Arizona. Four is the right answer. You got yes. $5,000. Yes. You are so brilliant. <laughs> oh, good oh. job. You okay, TK? <laughs> oh, now it says man. here on the card, your dad was a pastor, huh? Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I'm a PK. I'm TK the PK. Oh, Go ahead. That's, I love it. I love yeah. it. Well, TK the PK's got five thousand dollars. We're about to play for ten. That it's makes a pretty good offering. Yeah, right? man, yeah. that's good. That's a good offering. <laughs> let's double that five thousand. Pick another subject, TK. I say let's double it. Let's double it. Since you just mentioned how my father is a pastor, I think it's time for me to confront my demons and face up to my fear of geography. First grade. First grade U.S. geography. geography. Let's face our fears. Let's face our fears. For $10,000, the first grade U.S. geography question is, California's northern border is with what other state? I am so ridiculous, man. California's uh, northern border is with what other state? Sierra has locked in her answer. California's northern border is with what other state? Wow. And this is such a simple one, too. Uh, they're, all, they're all simple if you know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> OK, you know what, Jeff? I picked my category based on faith. I'm gonna do my answer based on faith. You know, I confronted my inner demons and I'm gonna conquer those inner demons by placing faith in a higher knowledge. And so I'm gonna go with Sierra <laughs> and I'm gonna copy her ass. I like that. <laughs> You're a man of faith. <laughs> Sierra, young goddess of knowledge. TK. The question, California's northern border is with what other state? The correct answer is Oregon. 
If she said Oregon, you have $10,000. If she didn't, you're going home with nothing. For $10,000, little Miss Sierra said, Oregon! Oh, yes! Yes! Woo! How about that? Oh, man. You You're, are so, so amazing. You're so paid, amazing. paid off, TK. Let's do a pound. Let's do a pound. Boom. There we go. All right, now, TK, what would you do with $10,000? Oh, man. That money is easily spent on season tickets for the Chicago Bulls, the Chicago Bears, and the Chicago Cubs. We are talking about <laughs> one <laughs> fun year. You know what I'm That's saying? That's a good year. Yeah. Hey, let's turn 10 into 25000 all right? amazing if we can Because then do we that. got a little money left over. You've used all your cheats. But let's pick another subject okay. and look at the $25,000 question. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna go at the crowd here. And I'm gonna go second grade music. Second grade music. Oh my God. All right. You get this one right, you're leaving here with no less than $25,000 today. Okay. The second grade music question is coming up when we come back. Our contestant, T.K. Coleman's got $10,000. Unfortunately, no more help from your classmates no because you've used both your cheats and your save. You selected second grade music for $25,000, T.K. Here's the question. True or false, on a standard piano, the farthest key on the left will make a higher pitch sound than the farthest key on the right. True or false, on a standard piano, the farthest key on the left will make a higher pitch sound than the farthest key on the right. You know, I used to play uh, on the piano because like, I found out how to do the horror movie thing where you go, doom, ding, 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 yeah. ding, ding. And just because of that, I know that the keys on the left give you that doom sound, boom. and the keys on the right give you that ding, 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 ding. So, this statement has to be false. So. I know I got this one. I got this one. If I get this one right, I'm doing my, my Superman pose. TK. Yes. I don't know how to tell you this. Oh. You're the comeback kid. You're right. You got $25,000. How about that? Oh, man. And here's the great thing. A, we're halfway to the million dollar question. Halfway and there. We B, can do it. this question, there's no reason not to answer it because you got 25,000 right now. Even if you miss it, you're leaving here with 25,000. You're not giving anything back. Okay, okay. Pick a subject, bud. Let's try fourth grade science. Fourth grade science for $50,000. TK, here's the fourth grade question. The alloy bronze is traditionally made from combining tin with what other metallic element? Wow. The alloy bronze is traditionally made by combining tin with what other metallic element? This is bananas. <laughs> I would get this question. Wow. Hey. You think you mix tin with bananas? <laughs> uh, the alloy bronze is traditionally made from combining tin with what other metallic element? Man. Well, um, I don't even, I don't know. There's just, uh, I'm, copper. I told you, you had nothing to lose by guessing. Right. 
but you had $25,000 to win, and you just did it. It is power. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Are you serious? Are you serious? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Man. Where did copper uh, come from? I have no idea. Out of my inner fifth grader, I channel him, and he was just like, copper. Well, that was a $25,000 guest wow. that paid off. How about that? Wow. Man, you know, looking at the kids over there, they're motivating me, they're feeding me with that energy, so. You want to play for $100,000? I want to play for $100,000. All right. You can, you can see the question and still drop out. But pick a subject. Let's go with fifth grade literature. Fifth grade literature. For $100,000, the fifth grade literature question is, who is the author of the poem inscribed on the base of the Statue of Liberty called the New Colossus? Who is the author of the poem inscribed on the base of the Statue of Liberty called the New Colossus? Ha ha, I made a mistake. Let's do fourth grade history. <laughs> <laughs> now, you took a guess on the last one and got it right with copper. <laughs> you guessed this time, and if you're wrong, you're giving back $25,000, okay? Mm. You ever been to New York? I've been to New York. Did you ever visit the Statue of Liberty? Yes, but I wish when I was there I read the New Colossus. <laughs> oh, man. Right now, my, I'm, I'm having a serious battle with my ego because uh, I do not want to make that concession. So I think I'm going to uh, drop out of school and leave the future to these kids. Let's see, for giggles, what your classmates had. Your classmates said Emma Lazarus. Robert Frost, <laughs> the candy man. <laughs> and Emma Lazarus. The correct answer is Emma Lazarus. How about that? Wow. Way to go, girls. Good job. But here's the good news. You are walking out of here with $50,000, DK. Congratulations. Thanks for these guys. That's a good little day's work right, right there. Thank you so much, man. All right, TK. There's the camera. Let's hear the magic word. All right. <laughs> My name is TK Coleman, and a great corporate trainer I am, but smarter than a fifth grader, I ain't. <laughs> we'll be right back. Congratulations. Smarter than a fifth grader. Are you guys ready to meet your new classmate? Yeah! He is a 38-year-old deputy sheriff who attended Ladera Elementary School. Please welcome John Mayo. Come on, girl. Come on. Hey, John. Hey, welcome to the show. Oh, yeah. Doing great. Hey. Somebody had their caffeine today. I had plenty, plenty, plenty of caffeine. Deputy Sheriff, huh? Yes, sir. Oh, look at this photo. Look at this. Is this? Uh, that's not a that, helmet either. That's, that's my hair. No, that's Joni Loves Chachi is what that is. <laughs> Chachi and Joni are in that hair. Well, these are going to be your classmates today. Yep. Pick one of them. Let's get started. Let's start out with McKinsey. Give me some love, man. All right, let me explain how the game works, John. On the board, you're gonna see 10 subjects. They range from first grade through the fifth grade. If at any point this test proves to be too difficult, you can drop out of school here. It's totally cool. You can take the money that you've won up to that point. You can run. But before you leave, one little promise you have to make to me, and I, and I trust you, because you're law enforcement. 
You're going to look in that camera and tell the entire world, I am not smarter than a fifth grader. Do we have a deal? You have a deal, John. We got a deal. All right. Let's find out. Is John Mayo smarter than a fifth grader? All right, Mackenzie, there's 10 subjects up there. If you had to pick the two that you were the best at, what would you say? I would say grammar and English. She says grammar and English. One is a first grade question, one is a third. For $1,000, pick your first subject. Well, let's go with uh, first grade grammar. First grade grammar. John, for $1,000, here is your first grade question. How many apostrophes should be in the following sentence to make it grammatically correct. Nathan's dog licked its paw. How many apostrophes should be in the following sentence to make it grammatically correct? Nathan's dog licked its paw. Your classmate, Mackenzie, has locked in her answer. What are you thinking, John? I'm thinking uh, Nathan's has one and it's, oh, like it's paw. I'm gonna go with um, two and I'm gonna lock that in. Two. <laughs> the question, how many apostrophes should be in the following sentence to make it grammatically correct? Nathan's dog licked its paw. I'm so glad it says paw there. Uh, <laughs> and you know why a dog licks his paw? I'm not going there, Because Jeff. he can. <laughs> All right. You said two. I will tell you this. The entire class over here has the correct answer. You want to see what they said? Sure. Maybe please see what the class said. One, 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 one. Yow. The only word that should have an apostrophe in the sentence is Nathan's. One. Oh, it is. <sighs> it's a hard game, Jeff. It is a hard game. Yeah. The only answer that matters in the building is what this little girl said. I know she's got it. Without that, you're in the back of the squad car and headed home. Yep, no. How many apostrophes should be in the following sentence to make it grammatically correct? Nathan's dog licked its paw. Mackenzie said... One, you got $1,000. Thank you, thank you. God, how did I miss that? One out of the way. Nine right. subjects left, pick your next one. Let's go first grade measurements. First grade measurements, $2,000. John, here's your question. In a given calendar year, if Christmas Eve is on a Monday, on what day of the week will New Year's Eve occur? In a given calendar year, if Christmas Eve is on a Monday, on what day of the week will New Year's Eve occur? Your classmate Mackenzie has locked in her answer. Okay. Well, Christmas Eve is on the 24th. So if the 24th is a Monday and New Year's Eve is the 31st of that month, which is seven days later, I'm assuming it's a Monday. So um, it looks plain as day. So did the last one though. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go ahead and lock in what day of the week I'm gonna say a Monday. I'm gonna say you're right, you yeah. got $2,000. Mackenzie also had Monday. Everybody had Monday. Good job, Mackenzie. All right, they can only help you two questions at a time. Time to pick another classmate. Let's go with Nathan. Nathan, come on up here.
All right, you've got $2,000. Let's turn it into $5,000. Time to pick another subject. You got it. What's your, what's your favorites? I like math and U.S. geography. Math and U.S. geography. Let's go second grade U.S. geography. Second grade U.S. geography for $5,000. John, here's your question. True or false? Part of the Grand Canyon National Park is located in Colorado. True or false? Part of the Grand Canyon National Park is located in Colorado. Nathan has locked in his answer. Okay. Well, Grand Canyon is in Arizona. The part, the word part, throws me off a little. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and lock in an answer of false. You said false. True or false, part of the Grand Canyon National Park is located in Colorado. Let's see what the class said. I said you had a 50-50 chance, right? Yeah. Ooh. True, true, false, false. That helps a lot. 50-50. That's right, 50-50. How you feeling? 50-50. 50-50. I've got a picture of the park that's about to come up on the board. I don't know if I want to see it. The entire park is located in Arizona. Yeah! The answer is false. You got $5,000, John. Nathan had the correct answer as well. We are playing for $10,000. Pick another subject, John. Well, let's go third grade social studies. Third grade social studies. John, the $10,000 question is coming up right after this. Our contestant, John Mayo, has got $5,000. We're about to play for 10. I know you brought your family here today, John, and your dad is here. Your dad was a high school teacher, right? He, absolutely, he sure was. Dad, how do you think he's doing? Well, I wish he would have paid a little more attention than <laughs> us. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> he's doing good, though. He's got five grand. We're about to play for 10,000. You selected third grade social studies. You ready to see the question? Yes, sir. All right. For $10,000, John, here is your third grade social studies question. What was the middle name of U.S. President John Kennedy? What was the middle name of U.S. President John Kennedy? Your classmate, Nathan, has locked in his answer. How are you feeling about this one, John? I know the letter. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with the letter. What's the letter? I believe it's F. Did you ever see one of those on your report card? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm familiar with it. <laughs> it was too easy. I wish I had that save. What was the middle name? Anything coming to mind? Uh, now you do have a you do have your two cheats left. You got a copy. Nathan answered very quickly. You do have a peek. I do. You could peek at his answer if you if you like it. You could go with it. If not, you can go with your own. All right, I'm going to go with a peek. Peek. Before we peek at Nathan's answer, what ethnic names were coming to mind here? Oh, Franklin was. Franklin? Let's see what Nathan said. The Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald. Okay. Any bells ding a ling a ling? -a -ling? It, it sounds much better because. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and take my partner's uh, answer and lock in Fitzgerald. <laughs> Now, 
they say that police officers, because you deal with a lot of people that may be of questionable character. Correct. They say you can look into somebody's eyes and tell things, right? That's what they say. <laughs> look at my eyes. Was he right or wrong? I think he's right. You're right. Yeah! $10,000. Good job, Nathan. Woo, these guys are smart. Oh, boy. All right, you got $10,000, John. Time to pick another classmate. I'm going to pick Olivia. Olivia, come on up here. Come on, I need help. All right, Olivia, out of the questions, what's your two best subjects, you think? Second grade animal science okay. and fourth grade earth science. She likes the sciences, second grade and fourth Good, grade. Good, because I don't, but I'll go with it. <laughs> second grade animal science. Second grade animal <laughs> science. Here is your $25,000 question, John. True or false, a baby zebra has the exact same stripe pattern as its mother. True or false? <laughs> wow. She's locked in. Wow. In the time it took you to bow your head in shame, she locked in the answer. <laughs> True or false, a baby zebra has the exact same stripe pattern as its mother. What are you thinking, John? I'm going to um, go for the gusto and copy. Wow. The question, true or false, a baby zebra has the exact same stripe pattern as its mother. If you had to guess, what would you say? True. I'm glad you didn't guess. Yeah. <laughs> the answer is false. No two zebras have the same stripe patterns. The only answer that matters is Olivia's. You're either going home with nothing or you got 25 grand regardless. May we please see what Olivia said. Fault, you got $25,000. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Very nicely done, Olivia. All right, John, here's the good news. Regardless of what happens today, you have $25,000. Yeah. I'm happy, I'm happy, but I want more. I want more. The bad news is you have no partners on this one, officer. You're going in alone. <laughs> but let's pick another subject. Let's go with fourth grade math. Fourth grade math. <laughs> the $50,000 question is coming up when we come back. for $50,000. Here is the fourth grade math question. This is the classroom club question. How many vertices are on a hexagon? How many vertices are on a hexagon? Okay. I this believe... is starting to worry me, John. Yeah. I'm gonna go with hex is five. I'm gonna go with five. Five. <laughs> oh boy. Nathan, what's a vertice? Uh, a point uh, that was where two sides intersect. A point where two right. sides intersect. <laughs> These guys pay attention in school. <laughs> it's also called an angle. Correct. We have a visual 
of a hexagon. Count them out for me, John. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. But you still have $25,000. Thank you. That's a good day's work. Absolutely, absolutely. All right. We had a deal, you remember it? Yes, I do. You got the 25 grand, but tell them first. My name is John Mayo, and I am not smarter than a fifth grader. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Foxworthy, and I want to give away $1 million tonight if someone can prove that they are smarter than a fifth grader. And let's meet my class, Cody, <laughs> Mackenzie, Sierra, Nathan, and Olivia. You guys ready to meet your new classmates? She's a 26-year-old sales rep from Stillwater, Minnesota. She attended Lorraine Elementary. Welcome, Mandy Paul. when she was in Marine Elementary. It's me. I love this on your card. It said, one of the things you wanted the world to know was that girls could be hot and smart. That is true. That's why, and, and as a guy with I daughters... I think we get a bad rap. I think we get a bad rap. Pretty good. As a guy that has daughters, I don't know if I want them to be hot, <laughs> but they are smart, so I like that. Speaking of hot and smart, your mom is an attorney, right? Yes. Yeah. Is your mom here? She's here and very mom, smart where's and very mom? hot. Mom's hot, too. Look at that. That's your mom? And my sister. Look at that! Oh my gosh! Well, welcome to our classroom. These guys are your new classmates. They're gonna take the same test you're taking. We're gonna let you cheat off of them. That's a good wait. thing. Pick one of them and let's get started. Oh, I'm gonna take Sierra. Sierra! Sierra! Well, let me tell you how this test works. On the board, you're gonna see 10 subjects. Ace this test, we're gonna give you an additional question that will be worth one million dollars. Now at any point, you can drop out with the money that you've won, but before you leave, we have one little piece of business that we do around here, and it seems that we do it every single day. You have to promise to look into that camera and say to the entire world, I am not smarter than a fifth grader. I promise. I believe you. <laughs> Let's find out. Is Mandy Pond smarter than a fifth grader? All right, Mandy, 10 subjects. Which one would you like for the $1,000 question? Let's say first grade uh, geography. First grade U.S. geography. Yes. For $1,000, the first grade question is, Washington State borders which ocean? Washington State borders which ocean? Sierra has locked in her answer. Okay, I know this. I'm pretty sure it's um, the, the Pacific Ocean. Pacific Ocean. <laughs> You're absolutely right. You got $1,000. There it is. The Pacific Ocean and Washington State. Nine subjects remaining. Which one would you like? Let's turn that $1,000 into $2,000. Let's do second grade English. Second grade English. For $2,000. The second grade English question is, true or false, the word want is a contraction. True or false, the word want is a contraction. Your classmate Sierra has locked in her answer. You look at that face, Mandy. You look like you're watching a horror movie right now. Uh, no, I know this too. 
Uh, that would be, want is not, won't, that's won't. Okay, so no, false. It's uh, false. <laughs> I, I was just about to explain your cheats to you and you hit the button. <laughs> oh, me. Don't <laughs> Jeff, that's not funny. It's kind of funny. You're right. You got $2,000. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sierra. She could have saved Sierra, you had you missed it. You. Nice Thank job, you. Sierra. All right, eight subjects, four classmates. Pick another one, Mandy. <laughs> Mackenzie, come on up here. <laughs> Mackenzie, did you meet Mandy? No, I haven't. Nice to meet you, Mandy. I got to ask you a question. Out, out in the audience, I just saw this. There's a sign. Go for the million, Panda Bear. Yeah, that's my nickname. For Amanda, oh, Amanda Panda. Amanda Panda. Yeah. Do people in school give you a nickname? Macaroni, Macadoodle, Macintosh, Mackey, Big Mac. All right, well, say hello to Panda Bear, Mac and Cheese. Hi. I'm going to call you Macintosh. I hope you're smart like a Macintosh. If you had to help Miss Mandy over here with a couple of questions, what would they be? Music and nature, and then world geography. I knew you were going to say music. This is our resident singer here. Really? Yeah. Let's go with music then. Music, yeah. 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 All right. For $5,000. The second grade music question is The tambourine is a member of what musical family? The tambourine is a member of what musical family? I will tell you this it's not the Osmonds. <laughs> Kenzie has locked in her answer. You ever play a musical instrument, Mandy? I, I played uh, the recorder. Play a mean recorder. <laughs> I play the radio. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, th I think I still know this. I'm pretty positive it's the uh, the percussion family. And if I have a save, hopefully she's got it right. I'm gonna say percussion. I'm looking around here. <laughs> I can see everybody's paper. All of them had the right answer. Will you please show on the board what these guys over here said. For $5,000, they said, Percussion! Yes. Very good, class. Five for five on that. Mackenzie had percussion as well. All right, let's double $5,000. You want to do that? Let's double it. Seven subjects left. Pick one of them, Mandy. Let's do nature. Nature. Let's do nature. Nature. Nature? Nature it is. The $10,000 question is going to be revealed when we come back. <laughs> Fifth grader, our contestant Mandy Palm has got $5,000. We're about to play for 10. You selected third grade nature for your category. Mm -hmm. All right, Mandy, here we go. The $10,000 question is this Acorns come from what species of tree? Acorns come from what species of tree? Mackenzie has locked in her answer. Based on that stare, <laughs> let me tell you about your cheats. You have a peek, you have a copy, and you have one save, which means once during the game, if you're wrong, but your classmate up here is right, they save you, you get the money, we keep going. Okay. I should know this since I'm from Minnesota and there's plenty of trees and acorns. I think I think I know it, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna not use any of my cheats. 
because she can still save me if I'm wrong, right? Correct. And I trust that she's got it right. So I'm gonna say pine trees. <laughs> Acorns contain the seed of the tree that they come from. In the case of a pine tree, the seed is within the pine cone. Pine is not the right answer. Oh. Oh. Mom, how are you feeling? So oh. nervous. <laughs> I think Mackenzie's got it. I have faith in her. I hope Mackenzie's got it. Oh. Because. The right answer is you have a second guess. Oak tree? That's what it is. It's an oak tree. Mm. If Mackenzie said oak, you've got $10,000. If she didn't, you have nothing. For $10,000, mac and cheese said <laughs> oak tree. <laughs> Never, ever eat another bowl of mac and cheese with quite the same sentiment. <laughs> That's right, without thinking about Mackenzie. Exactly. Thank you so much, Mackenzie. Oh my gosh. All right, we're doing good. This next question is a big one because you get it right. No matter what else happens, you're leaving here with no less than $25,000 today. Okay. Pick another classmate and let's tackle it. Watch you, big dog. Come on up, Nathan. Nathan. Nathan, Nathan come Nathan, on up here. Nathan. All right, we got Panda Bear. We had mac and cheese. What's going to be your nickname? Nayrod. 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 He loves the cool. Yankees. He loves Nayrod. Cool. I like it. Now, Panda Bear, let me ask you a question. Growing up, who was your favorite teacher? Brother Philip. Brother Philip. Why was Brother Philip your favorite teacher? He was really funny. Nice, nice guy. Yeah. Well, sounds like finally. a sounds like a teacher we have around here, doesn't it, guys? <laughs> Brother Philip mm -hmm. thinks that you're pretty cool as well Hopefully. because he sent us a special message just for you. Stop it. <laughs> Hi, Mandy. This is Brother Philip from Bishop Minogue in Reno. I'll always remember your happy outlook in life. We wish you luck. <laughs> Keep smiling. And when you win that million dollars, give us a call. <laughs> <laughs> it's still funny. Oh, how about that? Well, that's sweet. How long has it been since you've seen Brother Philip? I don't even want to age myself like that. Oh, years. look, mom's crying. <laughs> Brother Philip. All right, let's oh, make Brother Philip proud. You have six subjects on the board. Which one would you like next? Now, you still have a first grade question up there. No, let me save it. But... Okay, it's your kid. Let's do third grade math. Third grade math. Got it. All right, everyone. For $25,000, the third grade math question is this. If Nathan can sharpen nine pencils in 15 minutes and Mackenzie can sharpen 12 pencils in 20 minutes, how many pencils can the two of them combine sharpen in an hour? If Nathan can sharpen nine pencils in 15 minutes, and Mackenzie can sharpen 12 pencils in 20 minutes. How many pencils can the two of them combined sharpen in an hour? Nayrod has locked in his answer. Let me see if, okay, can I have like a second? Sure. Just, okay, okay. Okay, I want to peek. I want to peek. This fifth grader said 
72. You're shaking your head yes. Mm -hmm. That's what I had to. I just want to make sure that I wasn't going wonky. So. Don't want to go wonky. Uh, yeah, so I'm, going, I'm going to 72. 72. A panda bear could buy a lot of bamboo with $25,000. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Give it up there twice, one time, two times. Yes. We are halfway to the million dollar question. <laughs> you still have your copy left. Yes. An interesting board. We have two fifth grade, two fourth grade, and a first grade question left. Yeah. You like anatomy? Let's do it. Anatomy. Anatomy. You selected fourth grade anatomy. Yeah. Nothing to lose on this question. Might as well answer it because even if you miss it, you still have $25,000. Okay. For $50,000, the fourth grade anatomy question is. The metacarpal bones are found in what part of the human body? Hand, foot, or hip? The metacarpal bones are found in what part of the human body? Hand, foot, or hip? Nathan has locked in his answer. Okay, I know you get carpal tunnel, and that's in your Wrist, but I don't know if there's maybe the same kind of carpal situation in your foot. I can copy him, right? You could. Metacarpal, metacarpal. I'm going to copy. Copy. Oh. So scared. Nearod, Nearod, Nearod. <laughs> Mom. I think it's in the foot, but I don't know. Think it's I, think, I think it's hand. Because the carpal it's... tunnel. But what if you have carpal tunnel in your foot from typing with your toes? Typing with your toes? Well, I'm just saying. What would your guess have been? We know what they would have said. It would have been hand. Because I've never heard of carpal tunnel in your foot, but you know. The two sisters would have said hand. Mom would have said foot. What does Nayrod say is the real question? The two sisters would have been right. It is the hand. Oh, okay. All that matters no, is what on. Nayrod said. I can't even look, I'm too afraid. Nathan's answer is coming up right after ah! this. <laughs> Our contestant, Mandy Palm, has got $25,000. The $50,000 question is this. The metacarpal bones are found in what part of the human body? The hand, the foot, or the hip? You elected to copy Nathan's paper. We later found out that the right answer was hand. hand. So if Nathan said hand, you have $50,000. If he said anything else, you have $25,000. Take a look at the board, Mandy. I can't. I can't look directly at it. Hey! There it is! Yes, Nayrod, you're the man. Oh. Nayrod. Oh. Nayrod. Nayrod. All right. You have used your copy, your peek, and your save, so your classmates can no longer help you. Yeah. It's just you. You can see the question and still drop out of school with your money, okay? Okay. Pick a subject out of the four remaining. Science. Science? science this point, yeah. First grade science. All right, Mandy. The $100,000 question is, for centuries, silk used in clothing has traditionally come from which animal? Spiders, lambs, or caterpillars. For centuries, silk used in clothing has traditionally come from which animal? Spiders, lambs, or caterpillars? Uh, caterpillars. <laughs> the 
has to be caterpillars. I can't even, it has to be caterpillars. It has to be caterpillars. Well, we hope it is because if not, you just gave back $25,000. Oh, don't talk like that. I'm guessing. <laughs> that was the easiest hundred thousand dollars you've ever made. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Mandy, you have a hundred thousand dollars. Feels good. Brother Philip is somewhere lie. right now going, yes! <laughs> Three subjects before the million dollar question. Mm -hmm. Two fifth grade, one fourth grade. It's up to you. I'm gonna go with geography. Gonna fourth grade, world yeah. geography. <laughs> Listen carefully, do not hit this button too quickly. Okay. For $175,000, here's the fourth grade question. The Matterhorn is part of what mountain range? The Matterhorn is part of what mountain range? Oh, no. I'm lost. I thought it was a ride at Disneyland. I, I know the Matterhorn. What mountain ranges do you know about? The Appalachian, uh, the Himalayas, which is what I think it is but it could be Appalachian. And I don't even really know if those are mountain ranges or if I'm just making those up. Um, I'm almost positive it's the... I can't, I'm... I'm dropping out. You said, I'm almost positive. What were you going to say? I think say? it's the Himalayas, but I don't need, I think I might just be thinking that's like the only mountain range I know of. Let's see what the class said. The Matterhorn is part of what mountain range? The class said, the Alps. Oh my God. They are exactly right. It is oh, the Alps. Oh, There it is right there. There's the Matterhorn. We're going out of the Matterhorn, of all things. The good news is, you are walking out of here with $100,000. All right, well, one last thing you have to do for us. There's the camera. Let them hear it in the Alps. Uh, I am hot and smart, but today I am not smarter than a fifth grader. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Smarter than a fifth grader. Are you guys ready to meet your new classmate? Yeah! He is a 40-year-old marketing executive from Ventura, California, who attended Fox Hills Moreland Elementary. Welcome, Cameron Kajar. Hello, guys. What's going on? Cameron, how are you? Good, how you Good to see you. Good to see you, dude. How's it going today? I'm doing great, you? All right, all right. I guess this is your photo from when you attended Fox Hills Moreland Elementary. Yeah, ain't that a good looking guy? Is that a hat? What is that, Cameron? <laughs> it's a hair piece for a nine year old. No. Hair, hair piece for a fifth grader. Well, welcome to the class. These are your new classmates. They're going to be taking the same quiz that you're taking, Cameron, right. and we're going to let you cheat off of them during the course of the game. So there's some good news. So pick one of them and let's get started. Uh, you know what? Nathan, come Nathan, up here, come Nathan. On up, Nathan. I believe in you, man. All right. All right, Cameron, let me tell you how the little game works. On the board, you're going to see 10 subjects. If at any point the test proves to be too tough, you can drop out of school here. Okay. But before you leave, there is a camera sitting right there. And before you can have the money, you must tell the world, I am not smarter than a fifth grader. Ain't gonna happen. Oh, I like it, but we have a deal, right? We got a deal? Absolutely, Jeff. All right, let's find Absolutely. out. Is Cameron Kajar smarter than a fifth grader? All right. All right, Nathan, what do you think, man? What, 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 what's your best subject? I don't know, there are a lot of good ones up there, but I'd have to say second grade world geography yeah, and yeah. first grade spelling. First you know grade what? spelling, too. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go with first grade spelling, Jeff. First grade spelling. Yeah. 
Can we see the first grade spelling question? How many times does the letter R appear in the name of the following animal? Squirrel. Squirrel. Oh, yeah, that's pretty quick. Nathan has locked in quickly. What are you thinking, Cameron? I feel pretty confident. Um, I'm going to go with two in the letter R. So my final answer is two. Two. How do you think you spell squirrel? S-Q-U-I-R-R-E-L. Take a look at the board. Yeah! Yeah! We got a thousand dollars, Cameron. Yeah! Yeah! Woo! Yeah! See how easy this yeah. is! All right, let's double that, Cameron. All let's right. play for 2,000. Pick another subject. All right. You know what, Jeff? I'm gonna go with a second grade world geography. Second grade world geography. You like that one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because he said he That's one of Nathan's favorites. Yeah, he likes favorite, that. So. All right, for $2,000, here's the question, Cameron. Which of the seven continents has the largest population? Ooh, Which wow. of the seven continents has the largest population? Nathan is locked in. He locked in very quickly uh, on that. He sure did. You know, Jeff, I'm about 99.9% .9 sure I know the answer on that one also. 99.9 is good. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and say Asia. <laughs> Four of your five classmates have the right answer. Oh, okay. Four nice. of your five classmates Said Asia, you got $2,000. Oh, yeah! Woo! <laughs> nice work, Nathan. Thank you, Nathan. Nathan was one of the four. All right, they can only help you two questions at a time. Pick another classmate. All right. I'm gonna go with Mackenzie. Mackenzie! How you doing, Mackenzie? Cameron, we're playing for $5,000. It's time to pick another subject. All right. You know what? All right, all right. I I'm going to go with second grade science. Second grade science. The question is worth $5,000. Here it is. Olivia rubbing a balloon against her head and sticking it to a wall is an example of what? <laughs> Static electricity? Kinetic electricity or magnetic electricity? Or a really bored kid? <laughs> Olivia rubbing a balloon against her head and sticking it to a wall is an example of what? Static electricity, kinetic electricity, or magnetic electricity? Mackenzie has locked in her answer. Olivia, have you ever rubbed a balloon on your head and stuck it to the wall? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't do that, huh? Well, yours might fall to the floor. <laughs> yeah, or, or Jeff, it might pop. <laughs> or it <laughs> might pop. Little bristles in there. What are you thinking, Cameron? Oh, man. Well, I'm not going to lie. When I was little and I did have hair and I was bored, I used to do that too. But I just never knew what the name of it was. I thought <laughs> I was getting in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> My wife said, you get in trouble. Get out of there. To heck um, with being little. I did it last week. <laughs> <laughs> OK. You know what, Jeff? I'm going to go ahead and say um, static electricity. With not 100% confidence, but I'm going to say that. I just wrote down the correct answer on McKinsey's paper. Take a look at the board, Cameron. $5,000. The answer to the question is static. You've got you saved. We're about to play for $10,000. Pick a subject. All right, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and go with third grade social studies. Third grade social studies. Kind of going around the board a little bit, you the know? The $10,000 question is coming up when oh. we come back. fifth grade.
later, our contestant, Cameron Kajar, has got $5,000. You've selected third grade social studies for your $10,000 question. You ready to see it? For $10,000. Yes, $10, I have. Yes, have. The question is, oh, it's a classroom club question. Who wrote the lyrics to the Star Spangled Banner? Did somebody just shoot you? <laughs> Who wrote the lyrics to the Star Spangled Banner? Mackenzie has locked in her answer. Jeff, 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 what to do? Cameron, 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 give me the answer. <laughs> All right, Jeff, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and use one of my cheats and I am going to copy. We're going to copy. Let's see what the class said. The question was, who wrote the lyrics to the Star Spangled Banner? The rest of the class said, Francis Scott Key. I like that, Sierra. Does that sound right? Can I be truthful with you, Jeff? Yeah. I was not going to say that. OK. At all. <laughs> Can I be truthful with you, Cameron? Yes. That's the right answer. Oh, OK. So what? <laughs> all right. <laughs> really, the only thing that matters in this classroom right now is whether this fifth grader said Francis Scott Key. If she didn't, you're walking out of here with nothing. For $10,000, Mackenzie said, Francis Scott oh. Key. Oh. 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 Hey, Mackenzie, I know you're a singer. Can you sing the first line to the Star Spangled Banner? Oh, say, can you see? Whoa. That, that was impressive. I'm ready to throw out the first pitch now. <laughs> Can you sing the rest? By the dawn's early light. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Jeremy? It's not as good as hers, but. <laughs> wow. All right. <laughs> We're down to six questions on this test, but you have to pick another classmate. Oh, Let's do that man. right now. All right, all right, all right. Olivia! Olivia! How you doing, kiddo? We have six subjects left. Now, who, who do you have here with you today, Cameron? Oh, yeah, Jeff. Um, I got my uh, lovely princess, AKA my wife, over here. <laughs> and, I've, and I've got my best friends in the whole entire world right here with oh. a little sign. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Crazy K, today is your day. Go for the million. Is that your nickname, Crazy K? Yeah, well, they, they called me Crazy K because one time I stopped a purse snatcher from uh, stealing a purse from an old lady. Did you really? Yeah. Good for you. Yeah, yeah. I call that a hero. Yeah. All right, Crazy K. <laughs> for 25000 which subject do you like? I'm going to go ahead and go with first grade grammar. First grade grammar. The $25,000 question is, haven't is a contraction of what two words? Haven't is a contraction of what two words Olivia has locked in. Wow, okay, let's see. The, the correct answer is have not. <laughs> You got $25,000. Cameron, you're leaving here with no less than $25,000. The brain is rising. <laughs> We're halfway through this test. Pick wow. another subject and let's turn 25 into 50,000. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right, Jim. I'm going to go and go with third grade U.S. history. Third grade U.S. history. The $50,000 question is, 
True or false, Benjamin Franklin served as a senator from Pennsylvania. True or false, Benjamin Franklin served as a senator from Pennsylvania. True or false, Benjamin Franklin served as a senator from Pennsylvania. Olivia has locked in her answer. What you thinking, Cameron? I remember Benjamin Franklin as the guy who flew the kite, and I remember him as him being in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got quite a few Benjamin Franklins in your pocket right now, but I want to double it. True or false, that's a 50-50 shot. Yeah, it is. You still have your peak and your save left. Hmm. You know what, Jeff? I I'm, I'm going to go ahead and use one of my cheats, and I'm going to go ahead and take a peek. Take a peek? That rhymes, doesn't it? Cheat peek. Cheat peek. I like that. <laughs> Actually, I don't think it does rhyme. <laughs> Olivia said, false. Ooh. Wow. Now, if you don't like that answer, you could go the other way. And if she's right, she could save you. True. If she's wrong, you don't burn the save. Um, you know what? <clears throat> Jeff, I'm gonna go ahead and say true. Yeah. Let's see what the rest of the class said. See if they agree with you or Olivia. Mm. True. False, false, false. You and Nathan both said true. Because <laughs> we got good brains. <laughs> Benjamin Franklin was a member of the Constitutional Convention, but not a U.S. Senator. The answer is false. She has saved you. You got $50,000. I just got educated. Good news, four questions left on the test. Bad news, you've used both your cheats and your save. It's just you. Okay. All right, Jeff. Cameron, we are playing for $100,000. Oh, man! Right after this. Grader. Our contestant, Cameron Kajar, has got $50,000. We're getting up there the big money now. We have four questions left. And let me tell you, at this point in the game, you yeah. can still see the question and drop out of school, okay? Okay, okay. You can walk away with 50, so there's no reason not to see the question. Pick sure, one of the four sure, subjects sure. remaining, Cameron. Wow, Jeff, I'm not gonna lie, they're kind of difficult. We're getting down, we're getting what down. Are you guys? <laughs> we're getting down to what? the business. Cultural studies. Cultural studies. Your best friend says cultural studies. Your wife says cultural studies. All right. And you know what? That's why he's my best friend. That's why she's my wife. So I'm gonna go with fifth grade cultural studies. Fifth grade cultural studies. <laughs> Here's the cool thing about that. If you don't know the answer, you can always blame them and tell them you were gonna go for anatomy, all right? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Cameron, good. here's the $100,000 question. What Aztec emperor of the 16th century was overthrown by Spanish conquistador Hernando Cortez and his army? Whoa. That may have been the most difficult sentence I've ever read in my life. <laughs> What Aztec emperor of the 16th century was overthrown by Spanish conquistador Hernando Cortez and his army? Wow. Anything going through your mind? Aztec emperor of the 16th century. I want to say Apollo, but that's the Greek guy. You know what, Jeff? Um, I, I don't have any more cheats left, and. It's been a pleasure coming out on this show, but I'm going to go ahead and drop out. 
That's wise, Cameron. That's wise. I, I, don't, I don't even have a clue. Let me ask your wife something, okay? Okay. okay. Marcella, <laughs> where are you from? Mexico. Mexico. Great. Your wife is from Mexico and you didn't know the answer? I know the answer. You know the answer. <laughs> Cameron, you're gonna have to live with this for a long time. Oh my goodness. What, what do you think it is? Moctezuma. Montezuma. Oh! There's the revenge because she's right. Oh! The tequila! <laughs> Montezuma was the Aztec emperor of the 16th century. No shame, you're walking out of here with $50,000, Cameron. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, we did have a little deal. Yes, we did, Jeff. There's the camera, tell them. My name is Cameron, and I might be a marketing executive, but I am not smarter than a fifth grader. We'll see you next week. Goodbye, everybody. Congratulations.